Hello and welcome back guys. In this video tutorial we'll be talking about the chi-square test. And chi-square chi test in from the point of view of biology. And we many a times require this test to actually uh, test the hypothesis. Suppose you form a hypothesis based on several experimental setups. Now you need to look for whether the experiment is or whether those results are justified or not, whether the hypothesis you formed are uh, is positive or not whether you get this hypothesis or reject the hypothesis. To accept or reject a hypothesis uh, for expression of several experiments, we set up this chi-square test because it is a beautifully elaborated test to give us the way of either accepting or decline a result of an, or decline the effect of an experimental state or of a uh, hypothesis. Now in this case, uh, this is also called as good of fit good of fit test because whether according to the statistical aptitude uh, whether your data that we are getting from the experiment e, uh, is correct or not and it is going to be probable to get this data or not right so let's begin with it so now let's uh, now let's say the, an example from so let's take an example of purple dumpy fly purple uh, so let's talk about drosophila and crossing between drosophila two characteristics are taken one is the eye color that is purple and red uh, these are the two different opposite characteristics and, uh, and the type of wing the wing we are talking about here is a dumpy so purple and dumpy here is the example uh, PR PR and DP DP is a type and it is crossed with red eye with normal wings so it will be termed as pr plus pr plus dp plus dp plus right so these are the characteristics we need to cross them once we cross them what we'll get this is a dominant trait this red thing is the dominant trait here this red thing is the dominant red eye is the dominant normal wing is the dominant so in all of in f1 generation all of the progeny will have this phenotype of red eye and normal wings so PR plus PR plus DP plus DP plus will be the genotype here right so once we are having them now once we test cross one F1 offspring with the parental type right suppose we make a test cross so after that test cross suppose we get a result we get total number of C60 say total number of 360 individual and in this total 360 individual suppose in the experiment we get this data of 89.97 so four different possibilities will be there after this test cross and one possibility will be remember purple dumpy let's say purple dumpy another possibility will be uh, let's say here uh, let's say this one purple normal and another will be here red normal and red dumpy so these are the four phenotypes that we will be getting and these are the number of offspring that we are getting right so if you look at it carefully what we can see from here we can see that here these two individual are having the phenotype exactly like their parent purple dumpy and red normal right so they are kind of parental in nature and these two are having completely different type of phenotypes. So one phenotype as of a parent, but another one is completely different. So they are termed as recombinant type. Right? So that's the kind of normal thing for us. Now once we understand this concept, that when we get these numbers, now it's the deal to construct the table, which is called the chi-square table. Okay. So let's construct the chi-square table. So once we understand, so chi-square table is actually based on uh, several data. So let me uh, do this table in the top. So let's. So the chi-square table is based on here will be the the uh, phenotypes will be there, and then we'll be seeing the observed number of phenotype termed as small o then we'll be writing as the expected 
number of phenotype will be letting as small e then we will be seeing the difference or d which will be o minus e only then finally we will be having d square then we will be having d square by e so these are the different different uh, parameters that we need to find now once we conducted the experiment whatever ex experiment you conduct now what we want to do we form a hypothesis hypothesis means you you just uh, predict that this is going to be the case now you want to see whether this this prediction that we're doing is going to be statistically significant or not right now how they get this image that it is statistically significant or not because using chi square once you get the data it will tell you that if you repeatedly conduct that experiment time after time what percentage of the time you get that particular result now if it is more than 50 percent of the time you uh, according to this graph that we are going to see according to the table that we are going to see later that if it is more than 50 percent of the time you are going to get that same data repeatedly it is told that yes the data is kind of significant so your hypothesis will not be rejected now if it is less than 50 percent of the time uh, is uh, uh, feasible that means more than 50 percent of the time it is unlikely to happen unlikely to get that particular result then you can tell that that data is not be satisfied so that data will be rejected or that hypothesis will be rejected right so 50% more of the time will be taken 50% less of the time won't be taken right or so let's let's find uh, this graph first this table first so in this table what we need to put phenotypes so phenotypes will be putting majorly two phenotypes here one thing here will be putting the phenotype of parental so parental phenotype and another phenotype is recombinant right here so here in the parental phenotype what we get we get number 89 plus 97 so what is going to be the sum of them because we are adding all of them together we are not dividing it phenotype independently so 9 plus 6 it will be uh, 9 plus 7 is 16 6 1 10 18 186 and in this case the recombinant type will be 4 174 right these are the observed number now according to our normal understanding of genetics if these are the parental this is the uh, recombinant type by crossing between f1 because four different uh, gametes are made and if we cross it according to our general rule what is going to be the percentage of both of them the, the, the ratio of parental and recombinant should be 1 is to 1 because 50% will be parental 50% will be recombinant according to our theoretical understanding of genetics and those four different characteristics will be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 according to our theoretical understanding of classical genetics so in this term parental and recombinant should be 50 50 that means 1 is to 1 so if total number of offspring is 360 so the parental type will be 50 percent of it which is 180 and the recombinant type will be 50 percent of it which is also 180 so the expected value according to our theoretical knowledge will be 180 and 180 so let's put the theoretical knowledge here 180 180 each now the now the difference between this value o minus e so what are the answers here the difference here is a 186 minus 80 will be 6 and this way it will be minus 6 so we need to make a square of it so 36 this one will also be a 36 so once we get this value 36 divided by e or the expected value expected value in all these cases 180 so you divide this 36 with 180 and the answer is 0 0.20 so once we get the same result for both of them 0 0.20 and 0 0.20 now we need to sum this this data we need to sum it and the sum will be 0 0.40 and this sum is termed as chi square this is termed as chi square value so the value of chi square here is 0 0.40 right so we successfully construct the chi square now the second important thing is to look for the degree of freedom for this data set now what are degree of freedom i am not a, a advanced uh, teacher for statistics but if you want to notice you can go back to my biostatistics course and you can see that in my youtube channel for biostatistics video what is degree of freedom and all these things you will find i am not going to talk it in this video so once you find that degree of freedom degree of freedom 
or df simply is calculated equals to the number of data set which is called as n minus 1. This is the formula, very simple formula. Number of data set minus 1. Now here we are having two different data set. One is this parent and another is recombinant, right? Now in this case the de degree of freedom we are getting 2 minus 1 equals to 1, right? Two data set is there and we are getting the value 1. So the degree of freedom is 1 for this data set and the chi-square value is this. Now once you get the value of chi-square as well as the degree of data set or the degree of freedom sorry, once you get these two values you can look for these values in the chi-square table because there are chi-square table present. Now in the chi-square table I am not uh, drawing chi-square table because it's a large table lots of values are there but simply by just uh, making the, uh, the way uh, we put map or graph by looking at different axes so by looking at different axes we put it similar way uh, in this uh, table chi-square table you can find uh, a region for having this chi-square value and also degree of freedom two different axes so once you put your values in those axes you finally get a value and that value here is termed as p-value okay that value is termed as p-value so chi-square value and degree of freedom when put you get the p-value once you get this p-value it is very important that once you get the p-value this p-value is going to tell you what is going to be the actual case because remember I've told you if it is less than 50 percent it is uh, your hypothesis will be rejected more than 50 percent it will be accepted now this p-value if if this p-value is greater than 5 0.05 then your hypothesis is not rejected but if your p-value is less than equals to 0 0.05 your hypothesis will be rejected so this is the final conclusion by looking at those p-value that you get from the chi-square table and once you get it you can say yes by looking at the p-value what is going to be the answer now the significance of the p-value I've told you before it means if you readily attempt several experiments and independent experiment time after time what is the percentage or what is the proba probability the value of probability that means the p-value so what is the probability that you are going to get your particular result that you expect or that that you get actually the observed data right and if it is 50 percent similar if, if it is going to be 50% of the time that or less than 50% of the time you are getting the same result in those cases you will reject your hypothesis it might not be the actual cause for that process in that case right but if this, if you are doing an experiment over and over and you get 60, 70, 80, 90% of the time the same result is coming back according to statistics according to the p-value you should keep your hypothesis in that case so this is in a sense as chi-square test very simple overview of chi-square test and I hope that's helpful guys thank you